third palette is like that third boyfriend you have where you're kind of like you're not as in love as you are as you were with your first boyfriend because that was young love and that was dumb and intense then you're not as in love as you were with your second boyfriend either because you're older than that too but you like it for what it is and acknowledge its faults so that's basically how i feel about the nabla poison garden at the moment hello ladies gentlemen and everyone in between hi my name is mia and this is a my virtual vanity a place where we both love makeup and we are quite critical of it if you are new hi i am so glad that you're here but if you are not new, then you will know that my love and loyalty towards Nabla Cosmetic runs deep. My friends tell me that it's possibly the color of the blood since I am half Italian and Nabla is an Italian brand. But who knows? Um, this is a YouTube channel, not a psychologist's cabinet, and we will not speculate too much on my attraction to it. But, of course, since I am so brand loyal, I decided to pick up the Nabla Poison Garden palette. This was actually gifted to me by my mom. She knew I wanted it, so she ordered it for me, and I love her so that much for indulging in my bad makeup habits. I am first going to show you how the palette looks like, show you some swatches, and then I'm going to tell you my impressions on the palette. The palette comes in this beautiful sleeve which has iridescent holographic sort of details. Uh, I'm sorry that the light is so strong and it doesn't catch it but it really is beautiful. This is the inner packaging. You can see the sort of reflect going on. As usual, Nabla just knocks it out of the park with the packaging. We open the palette and this is what she looks like inside. I like to look at it in two ways. First and foremost, I like to look at it in quads. So for example, we have this quad over here, then this over here, this, this, and so on and so forward. I find that each grouping of four shades, like four adjacent shades in the palette, makes a really pretty cohesive sort of look that either plays on similarities such as this one or on contrast such as this one. Then the creator of the palette, Daniele Makeup, explained that he divided the palette into three sections. You've got the cooler toned section over here in this triangle. You've got the warmer toned section in this triangle over here. And then you have got three pops of color which are Majorelle, Honey and Berry Bite. As you can see, we've got a good mix of matte and shimmers, as well as this transformer topper shade called Adoration, which is the same formula that they had in their former palettes, for example, with Honey Drip in the Soul Blooming palette. Let's get to swatching. This is my bare hand. I have no primer on it, just nothing, just my bare, pale ass hand. So let's get to it. Zodiac, a matte navy blue. Zen, a matte creamy brown. Rosita, a shimmery pink. Craving, a shimmery copper. Actually, no, that is fabric. This is Craving, a shimmery purple. Majorelle, a uh, matte blue. Adoration, the transformer shade. Honey, a matte orange. Narrative, a matte medium toned brown. Berry Bite, a magenta. 
Subliminal, a more saturated coppery shimmery shade. Opera, a dark berry shade. Adagio, a dark brown, matte. Archetype, a dark brown shimmer. Canvas, a yellowy matte. These are the shades. And let's get back to full bodied Mia. I have also done a three looks one palette video with this palette so i will have this that one up later this week so stay tuned for that if you're interested also i will have a tutorial in this video for the looks that i have over here so keep on watching for that i have been playing with this palette for one and a half two weeks now so i feel that i kind of have a grasp on what i like and i what i don't like about this palette now what is for sure is that i don't like it as much as the other two but i like it enough to appreciate it and cherish it and have it in my collection not because it's a bad palette but more so because to me this felt like a missed opportunity. I feel that they should have added far more greens, far more yellows. As it is, this is a beautiful palette in a beautiful formula. But in essence, you have a palette of neutrals with a couple of pops of something. You've got these two berry shades, this blue shade, this purple. But if you cover these up, you are just left with a pair of neutrals and this transformer shade adoration. Let's talk a bit about my impression of the shades. Now, Nabla Cosmetics mattes are very softly pressed. They are quite, they're sort of creamy powdery. I don't know how to say it. They are just very soft to the touch, which is a bit of an issue because with softer shades, shades that aren't incredibly cool or dark, they work wonderfully. But what I have found is that for shades such as Majorelle and Zodiac, that makes them a bit annoying to work with. And let me tell you why. Because they blend out so easily, the saturation is easily lost, especially in Majorelle. So you gotta build it up and build it up and return to it as you blend. And it's quite... It is the highlight of the palette because it's such a strong contrast with the others. But it's much fussier to work with than the other shades. It is workable, but not as good as the, their other mattes. Then what I found is that Zodiac is quite fragile, like I did nothing other than take it home and it's already got some very fine hairline cracks go... That was close. Very, as I was saying, very fine hairline cracks going through it. The overall formula of the palette is very similar with what they had in the other palettes, so they have these almost glass-like shimmers, very intense, very strong, very beautiful, that work best when applied with either your finger or a flat brush. And most of these I love using for one shadow looks, so I love using Rosita for one shadow looks, I love using Subliminal, Fabric. Archetype is also great if you're feeling kind of a little darky emo mood, you know what I'm saying? Then you have this Adoration shade, which is a Transformer Topper shade. This feels very weird to the touch, almost like fresh powdered snow. This is not very opaque on itself. If you use it on its own, you won't have a great time. This is meant to go over the other shades to make them look different. Let me give you a couple of examples real quick. I have swatched 
Rosita Berry Bite and Archetype and now I'm going to add the Transformer shade on top of them. So you've got this Transformer shade, let me zoom you in properly. So you now have got this Transformer shade, as you can see over Rosita there's not much of a difference aside from an icier sheen. Over Berry Bite now it's turned it into this shimmery purple affair. Then over Archetype, this shows best, it's turned it into a sort of brown base with this shimmery blue situation. Overall, I like this palette, I like the mattes, I like how it, it's arranged, I like the color scheme. I just feel that it was a lost opportunity. They could have done so much more and so much better with this palette and for some reason they didn't and they played it safe. Do I love this in my collection? Yes. Do I mourn for what it could have been? Also yes. Did I have a lot of fun creating my three looks uh, one palette video with it? Yeah, sure. Was I wanting to play with the dreamy and the soul blooming instead of this at the time? Also, yeah, but that might be my basic bitch soul that likes pinks and blues more than these sort of tones. Now, if you were to ask me, should I get this palette? Yes, unless your major selling point is Mayurev, because it is a fussy shade. So, if you want the palette just for that shade, you are honestly better off finding a matte electric blue from whomever else that has great reviews and adding it to your collection of warm neutrals. Because in the end, this is what it is. No matter how cleverly arranged, no matter if it has that transformer sheet or not, no matter if you look at it in quads or in um, halves with the pops of color, this is a palette that is a warm neutral, highly saturated, but with a pop of blue. Very on trend, but not particularly what I wanted out of it. Now, what I also like about this palette is that as its sister, sisters, it is a very easy to use for one or two or even three shadow looks. So as I said, I mentioned earlier, which shades I like to use for one shadow looks, but for two shadow looks, I also like Zen and Rosita, uh, Opera and Craving, Berry Bite and Fabric, Berry Bite and Sublim Subliminal, Opera and Archetype, Adagio and Archetype, and so on and so forth. There's a lot of uh, two color combos, Honey and Subliminal, Zen and Craving, just a lot of great two color combos that can get you very quick out of the door just like its sister palettes, the Dreamy and the Soul Blooming. Overall, I do not regret I got this palette, I just wish it were something different. Now, if you are curious about the makeup look I've done, which I'm just posting a photo over here, then um, continue watching because I've got a tutorial for that and I'll see you on the other side. Hello guys, now that we are all zoomed in and my two breakouts uh, came out to say hi, let's get down to business to not defeat the Huns this time, but to play around with the Poison Garden palette by Nabla. Now, this is the unth look I have done with this palette, so I'm quite familiar with it. But let's get to it. I want to do a bluish halo eye because I found that um, Majorel, Majorel, this blue matte over here is maybe the most fickle of the bunch and I want to show to you how it performs. I already primed my lids off camera, so what I am first going to do... With a fluffy blending brush, I'm going into Zen, the medium matte pinkish brown, and adding it all over in the crease. 
This is very softly pressed. You've got some kickback, no fallout yet. Very pigmented, as you can see, this is one layer and it's already showing up nicely. What I find in general with Nabla shadows is that their mattes perform best when you kind of layer them in a gradient sort of way from lightest to darkest. If you try to do it the other way, from dark to light, then they tend to get a bit patchy, especially their darker shades. Okay, now that I have my crease done, I am going to want to start to deepen this area. It's going to look whack for a bit, but I want you to trust in the process. I'm going to grab a flat packing brush and putting it in Mayorel this bright, bright blue. And I'm adding it to the edges of my eye with a packing motion. I find that this uh, shade works best with a packing motion when you try to blend it out it tends to go patchy so like fanning motions it doesn't particularly appreciate more so packing motions Okay, this is it at all symmetrical, so I hope I don't end up with wonky eyes, because then I'll be butt mad. I'm going to grab a small blending brush, dip it in Major Majorel again, and try to make this look a bit more cohesive. Okay, yeah, as soon as I started blending this out, it's starting to lose pigmentation and saturation. I barely even touched it. I have to go once more on top of it. Now, um, you might have better results, because I did, with this shade on a concealer base. Sometimes I don't want to bother with that, you know what I mean? Sometimes I just want the fucking shade to work. To be honest, uh, my Orel was one of the shades that I was most excited about in the palette, but it turned out to be very beautiful, but also very annoying to work with. Because you have to baby it a lot. With the packing brush, I'm going again over the places where it kind of faded away to restore a bit of vibrancy. So, going to add it with the same packing brush on my lower lash line. I'm going to take the shade Rosita on my finger. You can also use a very flat packing brush, but uh, I'm a heathen, so I do what I want. Putting it smack in the center of the lid and trying to blend it a bit out. We are gonna blend these edges, so uh, don't worry about that. I want to blend out the edges of Rosita into my Aurel, so I'm going to grab 
Craving, which is this purple shimmery shade on a packing brush. I'm going where the two colors meet, kind of to make that transition a bit softer, a bit more natural from pink to blue. I'm going to take my fluffy blending brush again and take Craving and put it in the crease to blend Majorelle out. I know some YouTubers are of the opinion that you should not put shimmers in the crease, but I am a rebel and the only person that I truly listen to is my mother. So, they can't fucking tell me what to do. And I barely even listen to my mother, so what, what hope do they have, truly, to tell me what I should and shouldn't put in my crease, right? Right. I'm going to add some craving on my lower lash line as well. And into the tail of the halo eye over here, just so it looks a bit more fluffy. I like it when it looks fluffy. Looks a bit more lived than you know. Also, I feel that this make this looks make makes me literally look like I have sad eyes, and the emo inside me appreciates that. I want to deepen the corners of the halo eye a bit. So I am taking Zodiac on a flat packing brush. Take a shot every time I say flat packing brush in this video. I'm putting it at the edges. Just very light presses because I don't want a lot of pigment. I just want an idea darker. And I put too much. Bravo Mia. I have to blend that out later. Yeah, I feel that in all of the blending, I kind of lost Rosita a little bit, so I'm taking it again on my finger and putting it back in the middle. And you know what I'm gonna do? Um, I'm going to put the Transformer shade Adoration. This is a blue, an icy blue sparkle with a bit of a transparent base. It's got such a weird texture. It's it's it reminds me of powdery fresh powdery snow. I'm putting it in the middle in case I did not. Oh, that's chunky. That's a bit chunky. I might have overdone it. I am taking again a uh, fluffier blending brush and I'm going to take more of craving and put it in the crease and blend out everything a little bit. You know, I should have maybe did this look before I came on camera, but I didn't. I didn't practice it. I thought it would all go well from the first try, but alas, I had one original idea and now I keep having to do adjustments. Okay, I think everything looks blended and more or less nice. I'm going to put on some mascara, do the rest of my face and return with impressions. Okay guys, this was it. These were my impressions of the palette. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I also sincerely hoped that this information was useful to you. I, you know, I may love Nabla very much and I be, may be their biggest unpaid shell on YouTube, but I gotta call it as it is. I'm never going to lie and say that 
I loved this palette to the moon and back. I was much more in love with the Soul Blooming, for example. But I do enjoy it, warts and all, and it does has warts. So, that was it. Thank you so much for watching again. I hope I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget that soon I will be posting the 3 looks 1 palette video with this one. So, if you're curious about that, um, yeah, I'll see you the next time. Bye!